Greetings Internet, welcome to Aaron Plays and I hope you're doing fantastically well. This is not a gaming episode per se, this is more a discussion about the channel, gaming, what I've got, I'm still doing, what I've got coming up and what I want to put into a sort of a list of games that I want to do in the near future. So why? Why am I doing this? Well, I've seen another YouTuber do a similar sort of thing and I thought, hey, that's a good idea. You know, we learn from each other and I thought, that that's a good thing. I also have, as you, if you've been a, a regular watcher of my channel, I have um, games with, or live games with um, a person called Mark, um, who lives a couple hundred, hundred miles from me, but we play by, by a vassal. And we regularly, fairly regularly, have a, a chat um, about gaming and sometimes those are, are, are pretty interesting and, and um, I thought well okay maybe one day I can get the both of us on there. Well, we've already done it once when we compared a couple of games, the Hexasim uh, Fallen Eagle system and we also used the uh, Legion games Viva La France system, we compared the two with a brief little discussions also about La Bataille and such forth. So generally a Napoleonic discussion. Um, and it's mainly Napoleonic that I play with Mark. We have dabbled in other things, but we, we always seem to come back to doing Napoleonics. And as at the, as of the recording, which is the 1st of October um, 2023, we're currently playing Fallen Eagles, Plan Saint-Trois. Completely mispronounced. I know someone actually did mention in the comment how it was pronounced, and I've now forgotten. But we do that um, via play by email because of our schedules that sometimes don't quite match and it at least keeps the game going. Um, if we didn't have such a long chat today, we might have actually done a little bit of live play, but we didn't. And we're waiting now for me to do my turn. We're actually starting turn two in that and I've got to do a log and such forth. And uh, But I'm chatting to you guys. I, I can't be doing two things at once. So I, I, I do try to multitask. Um, on the table that I'm resting this camera on at the present moment is Anzio. We've got the box, I do have the box quite close to me. Um, it's open, the, the pieces are out. I've just completed a turn, turn eight, though so I've only currently uploaded up to turn six. So I'm a couple of turns in advance. So you've got the box, that's what I'm working my way through at the present moment. I'm thoroughly enjoying, and if you guys, you know, I haven't seen any of the videos there please do please go you know they're, I'm finding it was I was expecting it to be not as inter not interesting um, I've, I've heard a lot of comments saying it's a bit dull it's a bit slow it doesn't really work and in my introductory video to it I did mention that and um, I've been pleasantly surprised does it hold the word status classic? Not sure. What is a classic? Is that a game that gets multiple plays and has fond memories of it being played? Well, I said this is my first time playing it. But what I'm seeing so far, and the more I get into it, I'm seeing a bit more depth into it, thoroughly enjoying. Now, one of the things I would like to do, moving on, this is that I'm playing the basic game, I would like to do the advanced game of it. But it's got to fit in with what I'm currently planning to do for the for the channel so I have a list of games and it will go on that list where it will go on that list it depends on a comments from from you guys and also um, the feeling of playing I might finish this at uh, you know or finish the last turn or what I'm currently doing and I go I want to do that straight away again now I've learned all this stuff I now understand the rules I've now read the advanced rules I'm going to do that straight away. Or I could get to the end of it and go, eh, look at it, my list, I'd rather do that. So, hmm. my gaming is always what I fancy doing. Um, hence why there's currently four things that I'm running at the present moment on my channel. So I'm running the Anzio, and that's part of my, what I call classic um, playlist. It's a new playlist, the only game that's in the classic playlist is Anzio at the moment, because I haven't done any other videos on it and when I introduce it I said I want to look at some of the old Avalon Hill or SPI classics um, and 
play them and see a do they live to that status b do they satisfy me and here's the first one the next one i want to do in that list is war and peace so this is the avalon hill i believe this is the second or third edition of the game and this will now <laughs> Whereas I have never played Anzio before, I played this a lot back in the when it first came out. Then I lost. This is nineteen circa nineteen eighty. Um, the copy I had back then, I probably talk about late eight, uh, late eighties, early nineties, um, got water damaged. I rebought the game in about two thousand and ten off eBay um, to play with. Uh, again and never did um, I then subsequently sold it and yeah never ne never thought more, any more about it and still <clears throat> until I saw there was a computer version on um, Steam um, which is the latest latest edition and I noticed also there had been a Kickstarter for the latest edition of it um, so I'm intending to go onto the Kickstarter uh, the Kickstarter onto the computer game version and I'll probably do, once I've spent my money and learn how to do that, I'll probably do a playthrough of it. But it means we look on, the, on eBay again and I found a fairly cheap, fairly cheap, <coughs> reasonably priced copy on eBay um, and purchased it with the aim to play. There's, there's a guy that I play on a fairly regular basis, um, face to face, so this is not Mark. Um, but uh, face to face, a guy called John. I play him once every, let's say once a month. Um, and at the present moment, we're going through the uh, great battles of the American Civil War, Death Valley. And but I did mention to him about War and Peace, and he has played it in the past, a long time ago. And he says, "Yeah, let's do it." Though so his first was, "Well, let's do the full campaign," and I'm like. <laughs> Don't you think we should actually do one of the scenarios first to actually A, make sure we don't make a cock up and B, we understand what we're actually supposed to be doing and C, time, table, space, etc. So you went, yeah, okay. And um, I actually didn't do it that way. Yeah, okay, so okay, all right. So, but we're, we're involved in the great battles in the main Civil War. We're doing, as I say, Death Valley. We're doing, at the present moment, first Winchester. We're halfway through that and thoroughly enjoying it. So probably the next month or two will be continu continuing with that. So I thought, well, as I'm doing this classic series, let's do War and Peace, put it on the channel, see if you guys want to, to me to look at it. And then what I can do, once I do get the Z computer game, I can compare the two. What is the computers, and which I assume is a, a straight copy of the latest edition, War and Peace, how does it compare? How does the old one hold up you know is it still a playable game does it still work does it still satisfy so so that will be the that that's first on my list after completing Anzio okay now the other thing I'm doing at present as I say is playing that game Fallen Eagles the Place Centoire scenario with Mark which is a small it's just the Prussian attack um, and the, the French response Mark's playing the French I'm playing the Prussians We've done quite. A f we've done. I think it's three episodes so far. So and we've completed the first turn. Um, however, I've only uploaded two, so I've still got one more to upload at some point. But we have completed that third turn, and he's waiting for me to start the fourth turn. So it's just waiting for me to take those logs and make an actual episode out of it, rather than just random logs. Again, time. So that's, that's a job I need to do probably sometime this week, get that third episode up, but I'll be responding or starting the fourth episode log-wise at some point this week. So that's the way I look at it. That's the current, you know, because that's, that's a game that's in, still in print. You can go out and buy it. Well, you can go out and buy Hansi on War and Peace, but they're not in print anymore. You're just buying them from the second-hand market and such forth. But Place saint or Fallen Eagles, you can go and buy it. It's a, it's a brand new game. It came out 2022. Um, so I'm looking at that as, as current games. You know, uh, in, it's in my four, it's in my Eagle series, and it will stay in it. But the next game 
that I'd like to do to, to, after Place Antoine, me and Mark have discussed um, doing another scenario um, from one of the Eagle series rather than a full battle because um, each of the boxes has various scenarios in it so like Rising Eagles has about three scenarios then the main battle um, Ligny has about three scenarios then the main battle well, I think Quattro Brioni still has the main battle because it was a small battle anyway so I'd like to do another one of those because some of those I've never played them I've gone you know got Ligny play the battle Auslitz play the battle and I think a lot of us war gamers are guilty of that little one uh, got campaign game let's play the whole lot um, campaign for North Africa I mean all I hear of people saying that is play the whole thing because I'm sure there's smaller scenarios in there fire in the east let's play the whole thing but I think I'm not sure there is any scenarios in that but I think there was some in the Europa magazine but you know what I'm getting at we get them again and we want to do the whole picture that's just us Histor you know, our historical interest. Yeah, we don't want to do the little things. We want to do the whole, you know, Battle of Waterloo. Let's do it all. Well, no. The, the way I'm looking at it now, a table space to actually fit Waterloo on my table, it will fit, but I won't be able to do anything else. Uh, you know, and I'll probably keep knocking it um, because you've got the maps and then you've got all the additional sheets and, and such forth around it. It's got, you know, two maps. It's a fairly big footprint. And when we start talking about some of the game, you know, Gettysburg, three map sheets for the Great Battles of History, yeah, I haven't got the space for them yet. Maybe one day in the near future or in the future, I might get that space to be able to play these big games. Yes, I can play them on the on Vassal. I have noticed, though, that most of you gamers prefer seeing the real thing on the map board and such forth with your camera, and I understand that. I, I personally prefer it as well. Though sometimes I say with the, the vessel, you can zoom right in. But if I want to pose play and I haven't got someone here to play with, then it's the only way I could do it. So let's say our slits with Mark and so on, the only way I could play it was using vessel. Um, when we got, and this is where how we did we com our comparison, when we got the, the um, Legion games, uh, Viva Le Emperor, the Hanau, um, which was a one mapper. Um, me and Mike discussed about it. We looked online for a vassal module. There wasn't one. one. There wasn't one. That didn't make any sense to us at the time because it's a premiere. It's the introductory game. Can't play it on the internet. The only way it's face to face. It was a bit difficult when Mark lives three hundred odd miles away. So the way we did it is, I set up the map here so you can see the epic. You know, it was about. 12 episodes of, of that set up the map I moved I played playing the French I moved the French and then I sent photographs to him saying this is the current position this is the and you tell me the orders you want to give each of your formations and anything specific and I will move it on the map as best of my ability so I was playing cooperative solo is there a way to put it um, and it worked we played the game to conclusion and it was quite a lot of fun I'm not sure if there has been a vessel module subsequent to that. Um, it might be worth a replay. I've got three games in that series. I've got the Hanau, I said the Premier. I've got the um, four battles in Spain. And I've got the three battles in Germany. However, I'm, I'm not totally happy with that system. There's a few things that do bug me about it. It it's okay it plays well and such forth but um i think it's because i'm a bit spoiled on the hexagon system me i say me and mark have had this discussion and i prefer there's, there's things i like from both um the activation system in in, in the hexagon for eagles is i mean it's sweet it is perfect the formation system in um the legion game sweet as well but the activation system there is no activation system it's i go you go um which basically if you've got a lot of units to move your opponent could be sitting there for 30 min minutes staring at your eyebrows as you're honkered over the table you know that sort of look because you're moving the pieces um i don't have the prettiest eyebrows on the planet and neither do 
um, the people are normally playing. If you do it via Vassal, of course, that alleviates that problem because you can again do it by play by email and you just do your turn, send the log, and they return it. But I do like the Hexasium activation system. I think it is the way you've got to make a roll. You might be able to activate that guy if he fails and you've got to activate somebody else or pass. So it does enable the games to play very well solo as well. You think, right, I'm going to bring in Bulal's fourth core and the die roll says, nah. Bulal's sitting on his butt, scratching it and probably thinking about going home for the winter or whatever. So you've got to think, oh, I'm going to activate somebody else. And it, so your plans get mixed up and not quite perfect. And I love it. Love it all in that regard. And the, the Lab Batai system where you've got actually you activate units again by a chit draw, which is also the same as when you, with the American Civil War Great Battles of History. Chit draw creates that same thing. Um, but... With a hexim, you do have the choice or the chance to choose that formation. So you have that little bit of control. And depending on the capability of the commander, it says yay or nay on the roll of the dice. But at least, whereas in the chit activation, you're hoping that you're going to get a chit draw. But it's a random draw, so there's less chance that you get exactly or what you want. At least with the hexasim command system, which I said is sweet. You get to choose who you want to, and I really like that. So, so as I say, at the present moment, I'm doing Anzio, Planet Centaur. I'm also doing, oh, so what do I want to do as a new game to investigate? Well, it's another Hexasim game, and it's Great War Commander. I actually played this opposed face to face on Friday night so that was the 29th of September and it was great fun so it great war commander is like combat commander in the first world war with a lot better graphics so what I intend to do is do a full like unboxing even though I've played it so it'll be unboxing to you guys and I know there's unboxings out there but I will describe what how I feel about the things on it and then I will probably do um, either a solo scenario or if I can convince the, the person I played with, I might, you know, as a face-to-face, -face, might be able to do my first face-to-face -face live video as we actually play the scenario. Um, but again, that's all dependent on his time schedule, my time schedule, the camera time schedule, as in, is the camera working? Can I do a three hour all in one sitting the game but so that that's sort of number two on the list of new stuff because so we've got war and peace and great war commander okay and as you say you're asking where's where's Anzio going to fit in this well he's going to be in somewhere in between I've still got two more that I've got on a, on a list to play um games that are say so I've either not never done such as Anzio um, or just start to scratch the surface, or they haven't been played in years, such as War and Peace. The other thing I've been doing on my channel, if you've again, if you looked at the channel rather than just looked at the odd video, I've been doing my first computer game on the channel. I'm not a great computer game player. Um, I I get frustrated with them because you're not sure what they're doing and sometimes the AI does absolutely stupid stupid things or it cheats. Sometimes the AI cheats, you can see it cheating. I know that's to compensate for um, spontaneity from the human player or, or whatever, but it is a bit frustrating. Um, I did have the original computer game for Conflict of Heroes and um, I bought the computer game, loaded it up, and did all the things, and I, I played at normal level, smashed it. I thought, okay, AI wasn't very good. So I said, right, let's take the AI as, as high as it can possibly be. And I played the same scenario. Well, the computer wasn't any smarter. It still played stupid. All it did was it got more troops and more stuff to play with, and it played them badly. So 
I just had a lot more things to kill to actually get to the same victory conditions, but I, it was totally unsatisfactory. So to me, that game was more okay, and it could be played across the internet with two players. Um, I think from memory, it was sending log files and such forth. And that really was the only way to play it because the AI was shocking. Um, I don't know if they've updated it since. I mean, we're talking at least five years ago. Um, and that sort of soured me a little bit to compute. I mean, beforehand I had tried Steel Panthers, me. Um, yeah, and I think it's a lot of it is that I like playing people. Because you can have a bit of banter. You can't really have a bit of banter with a computer. Well, they haven't developed a computer yet that I've seen or that, or that I can afford, um, which has that banter. So it's a bit frustrating. Um, I picked up a copy of Mr. Gisby's, is it? Grisby's um, War in the East to play with against somebody. And I learned it by playing the AI and the AI seemed reasonable. I think it seemed reasonable because there's so much going on in that game. So I, I found it hard to keep focused on what I was doing, never mind what the AI was doing. But I played in that, there was a Minsk scenario, which was like Army Group Centre's drive on Minsk, and it, it seemed to give results I was expecting. Um, I, and I was playing the Germans in that, so I swapped the sides and played the Russians. And the AI wasn't so good as on the attack as it was on the defence. So I thought, all right, I will play all of Operation Barbarossa as the Germans. And I got to about four turns um, doing quite well. The Soviet defence seemed OK. So it seemed better in the defence than on the offence. But it was so big. It really was so big. I was, I was finding I was spending like two to three hours on a single turn and it's like Phew. and then um because it was so big the soviets taking quite a long time to actually generate through their turn so i was like yeah mm. and then so i thought all right let's do it a bit smaller let's rather than do barbarossa let's look at army group south and play a scenario and that was yeah and again i got about four or five turns into that but it was still a lot of work um so I thought, okay, and that's, this is Bob Ross. What are some of the latter scenarios like? You know, with, you know, let's talk. Look at Kursk or around that time, and they're huge. The amount of counters and counter density, and because I found because you're starting in the middle of the game, you know, effectively middle of the war, you had no, you had all these units all set up, and I thought I have no idea what I'm going to do with all these guys. So, you know. It, Getting there gradually by bringing reinforcements, if you're starting from Barbarossa, you know who these guys are, who those guys are, and building up the narrative and the story. You know by the time you get to Kursk, I suppose, that you know that whole front line, every division, what you're supposed to be doing with it and such forth. But just to give, be given, open up the box, and boom, it's all there. It's like, whoa. That's why sometimes, you know, with a board game, you've got to set it up. You've got to clip those count. Sorry, yes, I'm a counter clipper. You've got to cut those counters out of the frame. I've got to clip them and then you've got to set them up on the map board and you're setting them up individually. You're getting to see what you're getting. But if you've just been presented with 300 counters as your force, as you open that screen, it's quite intimidating. It's not the right word, but it's, it's hard work to actually work out what on earth you're going to do. And I tried it and I thought, nah. Um, at some point, I'll probably, you know, maybe when I retire, I've got nothing else to do or um, break a leg or something, I, I, I might give it another go, but it is, is huge. So, again, I kept trying other little computer games. You know, like Gloomhaven, um, a board game that's been converted on computer. It sort of works. It's quite enjoyable, but I'm missing the... Let's, let's play and talk about it and such forth. Um... That brings me to Second Front. People, there was a buzz about it. This is ASL on the computer. And I actually said this in all in the introductory to the game. And I was like, okay, let's give it a try. So I bought it, played a few scenarios in it. And thought, this is, it's not bad. It's not ASL. Uh, it's not, it's as close as I've seen. I think other people said there are other games that are better. But there's a lot missing. 
Um, I personally, I used to play ASL a lot. Um, I don't, I haven't played it now in about five years, if not more. Um, I moved on to Band of Brothers. I did Conflict of Heroes for a while, but gave that up because it didn't really give me the right feel. Um, I played Combat Commander, I enjoyed that, but there's no vehicles. I've tried um, up the scale a bit with the uh, oh, Gross Deutschland one, whatever that was called, um, by GMT. Um, fighting Formations, um, but that's a platoon rather than squad level, and I enjoyed that. And so I thought, okay. At the present moment, my tactical World War Two. If someone says you're going to play a game, tactical World War Two would be Vanda Brothers. Um, why? Well, I might do another video about that. I've, I've done a shot a few episodes for that, um, and I've also tried other. What was the other one? Something from 100, 100 yards. I've looked at it. I haven't actually played it, um, and I thought, uh, do I want to buy another tactical World War Two system? I've also looked at Panzer. Another tactical World War Two system, and you sort of like, okay, so how many of these sort of things do I need? Anyway, that's a little divergence, a little tangent. I went down there. Back to Second Front. Why? I enjoyed it. I've played it. The AI seems okay. A bit better on the defence than on the attack. So I did it. I thought, right, let's play a scenario I haven't played. And to be honest, it's probably the worst scenario. Um, from a balance port point of view that I've seen so far. I've done two turns and it's, as I say, probably the weakest scenario I've pl played and I'm getting smacked and I can't see why I'm getting, I can get smacked other than its die rolls are good, nearly always, and mine aren't, and also I did get one critical hit with the mortar. But uh, yeah, it seems to be getting lots of critical hits, reloads, I've lost most of my vehicles, or at least half of my vehicles, and I can't see why, because they're covered by grain. If you've got to shoot through grain, you're getting modifiers. So if it's using ASL dice facilities, they should be needing critical hits all the time. Well, they seem to be getting critical hits all the time. Okay, not much I can do about it. And uh, other than that, there's just so many of the, the, of the opposition, and I'm thinking, this scenario can't be balanced. He's got... I'm outnumbered three to one. All right, I've got better quality, but I've still got to take these two buildings in the village. And I'm thinking this is gonna be hard. And okay, I thought I've done two episodes. I'll probably do one more and see how it goes, but that I might give that a wrap and then do a different scenario. Maybe one that I've already played and try it again, see if I can improve on my score. But at least I know that it's, the scenario worked because this one just seems way off way off um so i'll be probably finishing that scenario and then moving on to another one um and then other computer games i want to look at in the near future though um and i know that most of the people that are subscribed to my channel are war gamers well i don't just play war games um, one of the Games I really, really enjoy, and I play with my daughter, and I play with my son, and, and, and such forth, is Terraforming Mars. And there's a computer version of that, which is very nice, so I might actually do a video of that showing you how that plays. And I say, it's not a war game, but I don't just play war games. In fact, I'd, I'd sort of dabble in it all. You know, board games, war games, miniature games, card games, role-playing games. Ah, role-playing games. Well, I've done two episodes of Traveller. One was showing the main core rulebook and the other one was part of the character creation. And I did that about a week ago and I haven't done the second part of character creation. It doesn't seem to have got much interest from most of the people here. However, I do enjoy Traveller. So what I, I will probably complete the, the character creation and I will show a few of the other rule books, And I might do a bit of a solo campaign just me yakking away and if people watch it they watch it if they don't, don't I mean, i'm yakking away now and i might only get one, one of you guys watching thinking what the hell is this guy dribbling on about but that's what i intend to do for travel but that's not on my list so the next what game that i want on my list is this one 
D-Day at Tarawa. Now, I have played this to conclusion and lost by two victory points. Or is it one? It was one or two victory points. I was that close and I thought, whoa. Oh, yeah, I've taken a lot of losses. I've taken a lot of the, the, the terrain that's necessary to be taken. Found it fascinating. I played D-Day, I got D-Day in um, Omaha. Thoroughly enjoyed that, played that a couple of times. And Tarawa, I, this is where the ASL comes in. I actually played Tarawa on the ASL, or the Swan Beach or something, Tarawa. Um, that was, <laughs> from the ASL, they love their rules. I mean, you've got three different kinds of sand um, described. Hard sand, soft sand, and whatever the other sand was. Um, yeah, yeah, ASL for its rules is bonkers. Um, and it's one of the reasons why I stopped. I think, think actually, Festung, I'm rambling here, but Festung Budapest broke me in ASL when you had seven pages, I think it was seven pages, on railway embankments. Seven pages of rules on railway embankments. And I was thinking, this is bonkers, you know. And yeah, that's why I stopped. So yeah, D-Day at Tarawa. I just love the scale, love the system that uh, Mr. Butterfield's created there. And do, which do I prefer between the two, between Omaha and Tarawa? I think I prefer the Tarawa. I find it more interesting, that, you know, it's a little bit more of a harder struggle. I think from a purely game mechanics and because it was the first one, Omaha is probably the better supported, better liked and such forth, but I just have an interest in the Pacific and I found that definitely scratched that itch and um, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. I've also got the Saipan and there's one, Iwo Jima. I haven't played, I haven't even opened, well I've opened, I always open my games so I look what's inside, make sure everything's there, but I haven't messed around, looked at the counters, pull them apart they're still sit all the counters are on the sprues and everything so again i'll get to them but they're not on my list at the present moment so d-day at tarawa is on the list so in the order we've got at the present moment we have um <laughs> <I'm gone> blank <laughs> oh I'll open up the box what is that called war and peace great war commander Tarawa, and the last one on the, the list of newish games is Into the Woods, Great Battles of the American Civil War. Again, this is unpunched. Um, I've looked at it. Yeah, it's all there. Great. Close the box. I really want to do this one. So, um, and I'll probably again do a unboxing and go through what the counters are. I'm not sure if I'll just do a playthrough or if I'll actually do a deep dive, instructional, how to how this game works, the command system and such forth. That will depend on, on how I feel at that time. So that's four newish games. Well, you know, so War and Peace is an old one, but four games that are on my list to be brought to my channel. So that means, where does this fit in? Well, it'll be between one of those four. The other one that I want to also bring up at some point is, and some people have been questioning for it, is my second scenario for Ambush. I did the whole, I say scenario, mission. I did the whole of the first mission, um, kept all the details. I want to run the same squad through the second mission. So that's five things. And then Tarawa is six. So I'm not sure what order I'm going to do them, other than War and Peace is the next classic. But will Anzio tip it and become first? I don't know. It all depends on you guys for that decision. And also all the, the rest of them depend on you guys as well. You tell me what you would like me to see next. I've given you a, a little list there. says War and Peace, Great War Commander, D-Day at Tarawa, into the Woods and Anzio. Those are the new things I want to do. If you want to let me know, that would be much appreciated. 
So that's the state of the channel. I've, I've been rambling on now for over half an hour. Um, so I think it might be the time to end. I've given you some of my thoughts. Any comments is always appreciated. Hit that like button because it gets the channel out to other people because of that nasty uh, YouTube bullshit um, algorithm. So, and subscribe if you haven't done so already and you enjoy what I do. But the comments to me is the best way I can interact with you guys because that's what I want to do. I'm, you know, I'm not just wanting to sit here and talk to a camera and I want to create something that you're interested in to make a comment so that I can comment back. I mean, I had one guy talking to me for quite a while about the um, Fallen Eagle system. We exchanged 10 or 12 comments and it was great. So we could, you know, that's the discourse. That's why I love this hobby, talking to you guys um, about what I can't talk to most people at work because I start talking about Napoleonic tactics. They go, what are you talking about? If I start talking all Napoleonic tactics with you guys, you know what I'm talking about, and that's great. But we can't meet in the pub because, A, I've got 640 odd subscribers at the present moment. I do meet, okay, with John face to face and Mark over the computer. I can talk to them, but I can't talk to you guys unless you talk to me and you make a comment, and then I can talk back to you. And then we can have a discourse, and that's where I, what I really enjoy. To me, that's why I don't get so much fun from a computer game because I can't talk to it yet the way AI is going and maybe in six months time it'll start talking back and I'll, it'll be great then I'll never have to talk to you guys again nah still human interaction Bing. so yes that's that's me done um, until next time bye internet It will switch off eventually if I keep clicking this button. I know I've said bye and it's not doing it, so I'm going to try a different method.